best thing. And what's your, do you have like a, a preference, like a favorite kind of work to do? Do you like the guidebooks? Do you like the freelance or what, what's most enjoyable for, for you to do? I like, I like feature writing, like magazine writing much more than I do guidebooks. And I don't really do guidebooks anymore. I, I've done a, a little bit of guidebook work, but basically not very little since 2006. Uh, so, because I find it's more, you get to go more in depth with magazine writing. But even more than that, I like writing reference books. So, you know, what people call illustrated reference books or coffee table books. So I did, I've done one, but the one that's doing pretty well for me right now is called Sacred Tattoos of Thailand. So I, I spent 18 months going around and visiting masters in Thailand, also Laos and Cambodia. And uh, so that gave me, that kind of writing gives me a chance to go really deep. And I did another coffee table book on uh, Buddha stupas. You know what a stupa is, right? The conical shaped uh, monument. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Jedi, they call it in Thai. So I did a book on stupas and Buddha stupas in Asia. And I covered everything from Afghanistan to Japan and all the countries in between. That was several years research. And uh, again, it gave me a chance to go deep into a subject that I was interested in. So that's, what I, that's the writing I like most. Yeah, very nice. And what's, uh, are you working on anything at the moment that you can talk about? Sure. I'm, um, I'm preparing to do a, uh, a book on the regional cuisines of Bhutan. I've been to Bhutan a couple of times. I've done a lot of food writing too. I didn't mention that, but the last four years, five years, I've been getting into more food writing. And I've done a couple of books about food, regional cuisines. And uh, my next one will be on Bhutan. So I'm like very excited. Bhutan is in the Himalayas, right next to uh, Tibet. It's a very Tibetan-style country. It's a Tibetan-style culture, very similar language and dress and the style of Buddhism and the temples all very similar to Tibet. And are you, are you a good cook? <laughs> I'm an okay cook. I like to cook. I find it very relaxing and I'm, you know, it's okay. Yeah. Some people say, oh, you're not bad, but I don't, no big claims. Someone just rang my doorbell. Do you mind if I check? Yeah, yeah. Exactly. Um, so you've, you know, you're based in Thailand at the moment. You must quite like the culture. What, what in specific? What, what are the specifics that you you enjoy about living in in Thailand in particular? Yeah. Um, I like I, I like the people a lot. I, I, maybe that's it. Um, I like. I was interested in Buddhism before I ever came to Thailand for the first time, so that attracted me, and it still does. But now I realize, of course, once you live here, you realize that it's just another organized religion. And, uh, you know, there's some good aspects to it and some not so good. So I'm less enthusiastic about that, except in the way maybe it informs like the character of the Thai people. But uh, I just, I like the people. I like the, and I like the flexibility of the culture, the way things aren't too, too rigid. Everything's just a little bit fluid, a little bit vague. It's the same thing that bothers a lot of foreigners, a lot of Westerners in Thailand. They, they say, oh, it drives me crazy. The Thai is just, they're so hard to pin down. They're so vague. They won't hold the line. They won't. They don't have. They, they won't have principles. But to me, these are all positives. I like. I like the whole give and take of that, and it, it makes me feel. I don't know. I feel much better here than I did in my own country, the United States. And there's a lot of uh, <coughs> uh, writers, uh, digital nomads, um, coming to live yes. in Asia and, in particular, Thailand. Do you think yeah. it's a good place to be for, for a writer? Yeah, I do. I think it's a very good place. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, it's got a mild climate. It's got inexpensive, you know, low overhead for, to maintain your lifestyle. Um, and again, there's the, you know, the flexibility of the people and the culture make it so it's not so difficult to adapt, you know, as it might be in some place like Japan, mm. where you can spend a lifetime and you never really feel accepted. You feel accepted quickly. So yeah, I mean, I think there are many places in the, on the planet that are great for digital nomads right now. Uh, but yeah, Thailand is one of them. Yeah, and everything's done online now, of course, so. Um, of course. Yeah, you know, and with decent internet. Them. Yeah, the internet's decent in Thailand in most places. Mm -hmm. um, did you see like a change or were there any struggles or, or benefits for yourself and the work that you do? Because you probably saw that transition from maybe paper to yeah. um, the internet, what what sort of happened for you in that in that transition? Well, I, it was it was great when the internet started happening because then you could get you could do research online. You didn't have to go to a, 
a university library, you know, maybe miles away. I I spent months like holed up in libraries, just pulling one book after another, hoping there'd be one little fact that I'm looking for. And it might be, you know, 40 books later, ah, finally. And with the internet, the internet was very buggy in the beginning, of course, and the, and the information was less reliable than it is now. And it's not entirely reliable even now. You always have to double check, triple check, you know, try to make sure the source is okay. But uh, for me, it was, uh, it was a very positive advance. I started really early too, because I was so into writing and, and, and I, I even adopted computers very early. I, I was the first person I knew to actually buy a personal computer. That's, that's how old I am. Um, and I was one of the first, to, I was on the internet in 1987. Um, I was sending email in 1987. 1989, Windows came along and I started on Windows in 89. So then there was, you, know, you got graphics and, and uh, images and video and so, et cetera. So I was an, I'm, I'm an early adopter of all that technology. And yeah, for, mostly it's been a really positive thing. I don't think you'll ever lose, like we were talking about the kind of coffee table books. I don't think you'll ever lose that though, or I hope not. And that's what I was saying to someone the other day I was interviewed, someone interviewed me, is that it's not that printing is entirely dead. Mm. It's become niche. It's a niche product now, printed material. And it has, it's, it's prestigious, you know, it's like it's kind of a luxury product, product. It's kind of like vinyl, you know, as they were, you know, vinyl is coming back for people who are true audiophiles. And print will always be there for people who really appreciate the printed page and, you know, see it as sort of an art object and uh, for display on their coffee tables or to give us gifts. Mm. I still haven't made the transition from a book to a Kindle yet. What about oh, you? I, I made it quickly again, mainly because I have so many books that I've bought over the years for mostly for research, but also for pleasure. I have three homes. I have one in Bangkok, one in Chiang Mai and one in uh, and buy, so I go back and forth, all three. All three are completely, you know, books are almost, you know, there's more books than anything else. I can't, I don't I don't want to ever buy another book if I can help it, so I, I use Kindle extensively. Yeah, then, then, then there's a good reason to, for sure, yeah. Yeah, the books too, I have books that I, I noticed some books in my back room here at this apartment, some coffee table books of my own that were, you know, stashed away, I thought very safely, but it turned out termites came in from the back. So, you know, with Kindle, you can just re-download. If you lose your Kindle, you just download another book. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. it's perishable. It's very sad to see the books. <laughs> eat. 